How's it going guys? I'm James from KitGuru and today we're looking at some new all-in-one CPU coolers from EK Waterblocks. Uh, some of you may be surprised to hear this but these are actually the first fully maintenance free closed loop coolers from EK. Obviously they previously released the Predator and the Phoenix series but they're more of a uh, expandable kind of semi open loop system and not really in the same category as these fully maintenance free closed loop designs. So the EK AIO is available in three different sizes. There's the obviously the 360 and the 240, the ones that we have here. And you can also get your hands on a 120 mil single fan version. The 120 mil version is available priced around the 75 euros mark. The 240 mil is more like 125 euros and then the flagship 360 mil version that's around about 150 euros from the EK store. So even though this is technically EK's first fully closed loop all-in-one CPU cooler there are some pretty big claims about the thermal performance. EK has equipped the series with an SPC style pump and that is said to offer a similar coolant delivery rate to a custom loop. Now that's a pretty big claim obviously that will be something that we'll be looking at later on during the testing and see how this pump setup performs on our Intel Core i9-9900K test bench. As well as the uh, SPC style pump, you also have a copper micro channel uh, thermal transfer plate on the base and the whole series is equipped with EK Vardar S 120mm digital RGB fans. The series is compatible with all current mainstream desktop platforms, so that includes Intel 11.5x, 2011, 2066. There's no mention of LGA 1200, but we suspect these will fit that because it's a similar or, or the same mounting system to 11.5x. It's also compatible with AMD AM4, although there's no mention of Ryzen Threadripper high-end desktop platform, so that may be a little bit disappointing if you were hoping to maybe use one of these on your new high-end uh, AMD platform. And something else that is missing from the lineup at the moment is a 280mm version. Now, I'm a real big fan of 280mm all-in-one coolers. They offer a very similar performance to a 360, but uh, you have obviously lower noise levels because of the larger and lower speed fans. So hopefully we'd like to see EK add to this series and maybe put in a 280mm at some point. So let's dive on in and see what's included in the packaging. So you've got a rather hefty and detailed looking installation manual that's printed in various different languages. And here are the Vardar S fans. These are high static pressure fans designed primarily for the use on radiators. They've got quite a industrial style to them with this completely square design. In the centre you know there's a rather large looking hub and then you've got these opaque fan blades that will no doubt be illuminated by the RGB lighting. The Vardar S fans run at a speed of up to I think it's 2500 RPM so these might be quite noisy going at full chat but obviously you can set your own fan curves and tune the noise levels to your liking. Obviously there's two of those with the 240mm version. There's also a bag that's packed full of fixtures and fittings and back plates and cables so we'll take a look in more detail at what's in there in a minute. And then obviously last but not least we've got the cooler itself and something that caught my attention pretty much as soon as I took this lot out of the box is the cable connections that have been used on both the pump unit and on the fans there are standard 4 pin PWM headers and also standard 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connections so that means that none of this will need any extra fan hubs or RGB controllers to control the fan speed or the RGB lighting this is something that I really quite like because it means you'll have less cables to manage and it should simplify the overall installation of the system. So just having a quick glance at the bag with all the screws and the cabling and everything inside, I've noticed that there isn't any kind of simple RGB controller included. So 
that might be an issue for anybody on maybe an older motherboard that doesn't have 3 pin 5 volt ARGB headers so that's obviously if you're gonna to have to buy the RGB controller separately because EK do sell their own RGB controller that's going to obviously increase the overall cost of the cooler. So the radiator of the EK AIO series is quite an understated looking thing it's got a, a very smooth and even looking black coating applied to it and the overall thickness of the radiator is 28 millimeters so that includes the frame that means the core is slightly thinner than that. The core is equipped with 12 coolant channels and has a densely packed fin arrangement. The tubing at the radiator side is fixed so there's no rotation available there. Where the tubing actually terminates into the radiator it's covered with these black and diamond cut uh, covers so they're just there for aesthetic reasons and serve no other real purpose. And as you can see the tubing is covered with this nylon braided sleeving so that gives it a bit more of a premium look and then down towards the CPU block and pump unit end we've again got the black and diamond cut uh, covers over the ends of the tubing and then we have some articulating 90 degree fittings which will obviously help again with positioning the cooler when it comes to the installation. Underneath this protective film is a, an EK logo with a kind of brushed metal finish and then you've got this large top covering with an opaque design and then underneath here is obviously the RGB lighting. At the base of the CPU block is this uh, copper coal plate. This has a dense microfin structure inside and the external surface of the coal plate looks very smooth and accurately machined. The base plate does come with a thermal compound coating pre-applied from the factory but we removed this to do some initial testing. So the installation process on both Intel and AMD platforms is very similar to each other. The Intel process does include fitting a backplate to the motherboard. So that's, you know, that's the process that we will show you in detail soon. Uh, before that, we'll just check out what's in this bag full of fittings and installation hardware. So this is the Intel backplate that requires fitting to Intel 11.5X and other Intel desktop platforms. There is a two-way PWM fan splitter with the 240mm version. The 360 obviously has a three-way splitter. There's also a bag full of standoffs and thumb screws, washers and some smaller Phillips head screws. EK has included an additional small tube of thermal compound so that's really quite handy if uh, you ever have to remount the cooler or you're upgrading your motherboard or CPU in the future. And then there's some upper mounting brackets for Intel and AMD platforms. And then a bag full of mounting screws for the fans. So to install on an Intel platform we'll be using our usual test bench with a Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master motherboard and for the first step we'll take the Intel backplate, place that in position underneath the motherboard and aligned with the holes then using the larger standoffs screw those into position on the backplate and they just need tightening up by hand until they're nice and firmly in place and then for the next step We'll fit the brackets to the CPU block, just place them in the cutouts on the CPU block base and then use the silver Phillips head screws and tighten both the brackets into position. Now we can install the fans to the radiator, place them in the position you prefer whether it's a pull or push configuration and then use the eight long black screws to fix them down. As I mentioned earlier, the cooler comes with a thermal coating pre-applied to the base, but if this is not the first time you've fitted it, you need to add your own thermal compound, so we're just going to use a blob in the centre of the CPU heat spreader, and then just lower the CPU block down over the standoffs, place the four springs over the standoffs, and then use these large thumb screws to hold it down into position. And then for the final tightening, you want to tighten them up in an X-shaped pattern from corner to corner, and this just helps distribute the pressure evenly across the top of the CPU. You can always use a Phillips screwdriver to 
finally torque them into position. So for the cabling we need to connect the two 4 pin PWM fans to the splitter cable and then connect that to the CPU fan header on the motherboard which is there and connect the 4 pin PWM cable from the pump unit to the CPU option header which is next to the CPU fan header and then because our Gigabyte Z390 motherboard has 3 pin 5 volt ARGB headers we can simply daisy chain the RGB cables together so that includes the pump and both of the fans and then just connect up the final phenomail RGB connection to the header on the motherboard and that is the installation complete it takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes on an Intel platform uh, AMD platforms will be a little bit quicker because there's no backplate to prepare as it uses the stock AMD backplate so as you've seen for yourself the installation process was really quite simple and straightforward we didn't come across any major challenges or issues during the installation process and even if you are like a, an amateur PC builder you should find it quite simple to complete and there's always the installation manual to refer to as a guide so as usual with CPU coolers we've been running our IDA64 stress test with the Core i9-9900K at 3.6, 4.7 and 4.9 GHz and now we'll let you know how it performed. With the Intel Core i9-9900K CPU in our test bench configured to its base frequency of 3.6 GHz, it seems as though the EK AIO delivers on its promise of providing optimal thermal performance with the 360mm version recording a very respectable 28.8 degrees C under load and the 240 not far behind at just over 30 degrees C. Thermal performance of the EK AIOs remains towards the top end of our testing chart with the Core i9-9900K at 4.7 GHz across all cores the 360 is the best performing 360mm all-in-one we have tested to date and the 240mm continues to record a very respectable load temperature. And during our extreme overclock test with the Intel Core i9-9900K configured to an all-core frequency of 4.9GHz, thermal performance of both the 240 and the 360 remain very consistent. Naturally the 360mm version recorded the best result however the thermal performance of both is really quite impressive. As we often see with AIO coolers that have high thermal performance, noise levels with the fans running at 100% RPM is generally quite loud. The EK AIOs follow this trend, however they are not the loudest coolers we have tested by far. So overall the noise to performance ratio is quite balanced and you can obviously tune the noise levels to your preference using PWM fan control and setting a custom fan curve. So our overall impressions of the EK AIOs is really quite good. It has uh, delivered on its claims of high thermal performance and it's quite a handsome looking thing. The dual RGB lighting zones work really nicely. I quite like this frosted top cover that helps to diffuse the RGB lighting so it's, it's not too bright and in your face. It also the rather understated looking fans, the industrial kind of design, that's something else that I quite like. And as usual with EK products, build quality looks good. The materials used in manufacture seem to be of a high quality. Uh, I, I like the braided sleeving on the tubing. You obviously you get this with a lot of coolers nowadays, but it's still good to have. The covers on the end of the fittings with that diamond cut ring also looks really nice. And one thing that I do really like about this cooler is there is no additional RGB hubs or fan controllers or anything like that so managing cables and installation is really quite simple and like I mentioned towards the beginning of the review I would like to see a 280mm version of this and maybe in the future it would be good for EK to produce a one for a high-end desktop AMD Ryzen Threadripper system as well so yeah overall we're really quite impressed with the EK AIO performance is good noise levels you can tune them to how you prefer and it seems to be priced within the similar range to other all-in-one CPU coolers of this type. So I hope you've enjoyed watching our review of the EK AIOs. If you have then don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe and bell buttons down below. Uh, we also have a full and detailed written review of these coolers over on the KickGuru website so head over there 
check that out for more information and you can also head over to our Facebook page where you can discuss what you think of these new AIOs or just have a chat with other KitGuru readers and viewers. I've been James for KitGuru, thank you for watching.